I must admit, as I as I record this particular um, uh, lecture, I really don't know where I'm going to put this particular lecture in the um, in the course because. Um, it uh, it applies to so many different units of the course, and so so wherever you see this put up on Blackboard, that's where we're going to put this particular unit. And the reason I say that is because uh, the 21st Century Community Learning Centers program is a, is funded by a title program, but as part of it, it uh, includes a mentoring program. It includes after school programming, all of which are in different units of the. Uh, of the course, so uh, so I'm after I get through filming this, I'm going to have to think about where I think it's most appropriate to uh, to put this uh, particular uh, presentation in. But but it'll work in in a variety of different areas, and I'll probably drop it in the one that that I think is closest to the match of of what I'm trying to get at by giving this particular lecture. And this one is going to be a little different because I'm explaining to you what we do in a school district, and I happen to administer this particular program, the 21st Century Community Learning Centers grant. And uh, it is one of the federal title programs, but also it does a lot of variety. And I think what 21st Century Community Learning Centers is an example of is that you as an individual school district can go through and assess your needs and say, this is what we need in our school. And in many cases, we go through and say, now where do we get the money? And uh, the answer in many cases would be to go out and pursue a grant. And, and uh, to be honest with you, that's sort of my bread and butter in education. I've, I, you know, in the last... Ten years, I've written probably eight, nine million dollars worth of primarily federal grants to fund innovative programs in a school district. That if nobody gets the paperwork together and does the appropriate application, you would never see the money. And so, uh, so many times, I think in education, we go through and say, "Well, I can't do it because we don't have the money." Well, we aren't thinking hard enough, and and we need to sometimes go through and say, "Well, there are other sources of money other than." and just raising uh, property taxes in your local school district. If you can develop uh, well-documented, innovative programs, many times you can go to the federal or state government and they get money from them that will help you do these innovative programs. So 21st Century Community Learning Centers is a program that we use in the Dallas County R1 School District. And, uh, uh, and I'm going to talk about that. So this will be a little different. It's not something that's included in your book. But Title IV, we've talked about that earlier, about Title IV as part of ESEA or No Child Left Behind, uh, uh, Title IV funding. One of the portions of Title IV said that money will be allocated by the federal government to states to support 21st century schools programs. And uh, one of those programs was called the 21st Century Community Learning Centers. And I'm going to talk about that more. But there are a few things that you need to understand about pretty much all grants before we get into too much detail about this particular grant. The difference between supplant and supplement, okay? Typically, grants are to supplement currently offered programming, okay? So, for example, you may have after school tutoring and you have enough spaces in after school tutoring to provide it for 15 kids but you want to be able to offer it to more kids. Maybe you want to offer it to 30 kids. So you could write a grant to supplement the current program with only 15 kids to add another 15, and that would be supplementing a grant. Most grants require it to be a supplement grant, meaning you're going to do something additional to what you do now. I'll be honest with you, I don't know of any grants that will allow you to supplant current funding. And what supplanting is, is that maybe I offer after school tutoring for 15 kids right now and I'm writing a grant so that I can pay for those 15 kids and then the local school district will take that money that we use to do those 15, or to provide tutoring to those 15 kids and spend it somewhere else. That's supplanting. You're never going to find money to allow you to supplant probably. So that's an important concept to understand that supplanting is not allowed. It's saying, we do this now, but we'll take your money so that we can spend it to do that, and then we'll spend our money somewhere else. That's definitely not allowed. Most grants, all that I know of, are supplemental grants, meaning that you've got to be doing something already, but you're trying to make the, gr the program better, either by making it available to more kids, maybe improving instruction, maybe by providing better equipment or more equipment, maybe by training teachers. It's saying we, were, we, we do this now, but we need to do more, but we don't have the funding to do it, 
and they can continue to do it. An example that I can think of in a previous school district that I worked at, we only had one parents as teachers uh, instructor at that time, but we didn't have any more money to, to hire another parents as teachers program teacher uh, instructor. So I wrote a grant that allowed us to have two parents as teachers uh, parent, family liaisons rather than just one. And so that funded an additional position. They would not have allowed me to say, okay, we have one in our school district, we want you to pay for it now and just keep one. That's not it. And, you know, so it will allow you to expand the program. It's extreme. I know I've beat that horse to death, but it gives you an idea that, that that's an extremely important concept to say that you need to always remember when I'm writing a grant, I'm trying to make enhance what I currently have. Another thing that I'd like to, to talk about on, on all federal grants is in many, some cases there are major grants, like an example might be a grant called Safe Schools Healthy Students, that you apply for that federal grant by sending your application to Washington, D.C., and then scorers in Washington, D.C. decide how they're awarded. There are other grants that even though the money still comes from, from Washington, D.C., it's allocated to the states, and then the states get to develop a system of awarding that money out to local school districts. And the example I'm talking about today, uh, 21st Century Community Learning Centers, is that type of grant. The money all comes from Washington, but it's sent, in my case, to Jefferson City. Then Jefferson City gets this pool of money, and Jefferson City says, this is the type of, uh, we're still going to call it 21st Century Community Learning Centers program, but we're going to send out the applications, and then I send my application for that grant to Jefferson City. Then Jefferson City awards them, and Jefferson City then sends the money to the school district, but all of that money started in Washington, D.C. with the federal government. So depending on how the grant is organized on the federal government, sometimes you'll apply directly to Washington, D.C. Sometimes you'll apply to a state, even though it's still federal money. So there's a little confusion about that sometimes. Okay. So the state has some role in setting the guidelines of the grant, but in general, it's pretty much usually where the money comes from. And in the case I'm talking about today, 21st Century Community Learning Centers, the money comes from the federal government, so it's primarily federal rules that Jefferson City has to follow. But I'm sure they give Jefferson City some flexibility in deciding how that is actually implemented. And a good example is that Jefferson City is ultimately the one that decides who, what grants are the winning applications and receive funding. So, so depending on the grant program may be a little different. The one I'm talking about today is 21st Century Community Learning Centers. And it's one that I have received. I wrote that grant when I worked in the Kabul School District and we received funding for it. And I've written it in the Dallas County School District and we're receiving funding for it right now. Uh, 21st Century Community Learning Centers is a five-year grant of federal money but I'm reporting to the state in Jefferson City. So it's that type of grant. This particular grant, this year, I just in fact, I received the letter yesterday, uh, and I'm recording this in August of 2010, that I found out for this year, and this is year two of our grant, this particular grant, uh, that we're receiving $631,000 for this school year to provide after-school programming for students and families. So it's a sizable amount of money, and uh, you can do a lot with $631,000 in a school year. Almost all grants are reimbursement grants, which mean that um, you have to spend the money locally and then apply for reimbursement. So you don't get the money. I don't get that $631,000 up front and they just send me a check and then I get to spend it how I want. It's I have to spend the money locally on tutoring or equipment or supplies and then I apply to, to the state, in this case Jefferson City, and then they reimburse us for that particular money. And by the way, that reimbursement is based on an approved budget. I have to submit a budget, obviously, before we spend any money. And then once Jefferson City signs off on that approved budget, then it's basically the go-ahead to spend funds and that they will reimburse us for that amount. So the guidelines are typically are set by the federal government. The state may add on a few, but I report to Jefferson City, and they're the ones that I work with, even though the money comes from Washington. Okay. In our Dallas County 21st Century program, and each one is a little different, that you're given some flexibility to model your grant application to the needs of your particular local school district. And so we partner with a number of different agencies. Now the school district, Dallas County R1, is the primary lead agency in 21st Century Community Learning Centers. But uh, we also partner with the police department in Buffalo, and they receive funding. Uh, the Dallas County Health Department receives funding. The uh, Dallas County Area YMCA receives funding, and the University of Missouri Extension receives funding to do some 4-H programs. So it's not just our students and, and our school district that are benefiting. It's a number of different agencies that are receiving uh, portions of this funding. 
And we designed an academic program, a recreation program, and an enrichment program that are provided to students after school, K-12, and free of charge, and it's funded by the grant, obviously. We're required to offer 15 hours of programming each week while school is in session, free of charge, and transportation is provided. It does give you some flexibility on transportation. You don't necessarily have to provide it door to door but uh, you do have to provide some form of transportation and a school district that is geographically as large as mine in Dallas County uh, you know there are some people that live 25 miles away from the school so transportation is extremely important and it is required as part of the grant application the classes are taught by a combination of teachers uh, by people that we've hired just to do after school programming and community members. So it, it, the after school programming typically runs from the time school is dismissed until the 615 and is taught by a wide variety of programming and uh, that uh, we must re make a report to Jefferson City twice a year and then you must also conduct an annual audit, an annual outside audit must come in to make sure that the money is being spent right. Uh, but anyway, that's a, that's, a, uh, that's a little background about where we were at. And what we've done with it in this money, and, and by the way, many schools have 21st Century Community Learning Centers grants. I mean, I know Bolivar has one, I know Springfield has had many. So a, a good number of schools have had these grants before. Um, but what, and, and it allows you to design it to the local needs of your school district. But um, what we're doing in Dallas County is uh, we're providing after school targeted tutoring using testing to identify those kids that would best benefit from after school tutoring and then providing a stipend for teachers to stay after school to provide that tutoring. We've implemented the accelerated math program which is a research-based uh, program that will allow students to take uh, assessments and then it will generate specific skill-based activities for each individual child based on their needs in mathematics. So that's something that's completely funded. That was probably the total program was probably almost $30,000 after you get the equipment and the software and then we've been able to hire a full-time implementer to coordinate that program. That's funded by the grant program. We are, we've now initiated Terra Nova testing, the Terra Nova survey, which is about a two and a half hour uh, test that, that does a great summary of not only uh, reading skills and communication arts and math and science and social studies, gives you a good general picture. We're now doing that at the very beginning of the year and at the end of the year. That's all grant funded in our school district. That's almost by the time you pay for the test and the scoring is about $30,000. That's all funded, helps us identify those students that need special intervention in after school settings. And then we've done a wide variety of recreational activities. I've listed a few there on the bullet points there, but things from sports programs and fitness programs to video editing to woodworking to robotics, just a wide, you know, uh, uh, oh, they're playing uh, frisbee, uh, uh, golf, and, and uh, 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 just recreational volleyball leagues and things like that, just a wide variety of recreational areas to keep kids engaged and keep them safe after school and in an academically enriched environment after school and a wide variety of equipment that we've purchased with the grant. We've purchased a number of computers that are on mobile computer labs that we can move from classrooms to classrooms that they use. And uh, we've uh, installed wireless internet capabilities on all of our campuses now so that we're not, so those laptops, no matter where they go out into classrooms for after school programming, we don't have to worry about plugging them in and dealing with wires, it's all wireless. Uh, okay, we've purchased cameras and video cameras and even robots. Uh, Lego Mindstorm has a wonderful robot program that is engaging for kids after school. So we've done a wide variety of that Title IV money that we've applied through a grant called 21st Century Community Learning Centers and have been able to push out these programs into our after school programs for kids. There are some requirements that this grant, and again this is an example, the federal government sets the regulations, says you want the money, this is what you got to do. And so typically there's a requirement for a partnership and in almost all cases the school district has to be the lead agency and that is because you have to undergo a rigorous annual audit. And most organizations don't require a rigorous annual audit and all school districts in Missouri have to go through an annual audit. So in most cases, uh, the school district is in the best position to serve as the fiscal agent because of that audit requirement. You know, you may have a local community group that wants to partner with you, you know, the police department or whatever, but they don't have the personnel or the bookkeeping uh, uh, ability to go through and document it through the audit that you have to complete. And those of us in the school business are very used to uh, having receipts for everything and documenting things by certain budget codes and accounts and dealing with things related to payroll and salaries and everything. So school districts are usually the ones that are in the best position to serve 
as the lead fiscal agent, the ones that control the money. And so the way that we work it in Dallas County, for example, is that, um, oh, like the police, Buffalo Police Department, they may need supplies. Well, they tell me what the supplies are, then I order them from the school district and the school pays for it. Or the health department uh, may have personnel that they have to pay overtime, and that personnel just turns in a time card to me to do these after school programs and I pay them from the school district on these individual grants. So, so typically it, it is a partnership but typically also the school district serves as the lead physical agent. The grant requires, and this is a federal mandate, that everybody that works with a grant have a criminal background check, CPR, first aid certification, and a high school diploma. So that's an example of where it sounds like a minimal requirement, but it's required. We have to report on that, that everybody that works with the grant meets that. Again, the audit that I talk about, uh, that there are required trainings that everybody that at that grant site has to attend. That's national training. In fact, I mentioned in an earlier lecture, I'd been in Washington, D.C. a few weeks ago, and uh, that was all paid for by the grant for me to attend that 21st Century Community Learning Center's uh, uh, conference in Washington, D.C. Then there are two uh, state conferences in Missouri that we have to attend to keep the grant. And then I think there are six uh, regional grants that we have to attend. We, I live in southwest Missouri that we have to attend by that. But those are just part of the requirements in order to access that $631,000 a year. I have to be able to promise that we'll, we'll send people to those training. And uh, by the way, if you're interested in a program like 21st Century Community Learning Center's grant, you need to go to DESE, go to the DESE website, and those just happen to be under after school programs. And on the DESE website, if you, if you go out to be an administrator in Missouri, there are a huge number of grants that are available that the money comes from the federal government, but they're administered by DESE. And I'm always shocked that, like I said, this, this 21st Century Community Learning Center's grant, over the five years of the grant, that's going to be over $2 million worth of grant money. And I talk to school districts in Missouri, and some of them have never even heard of it. But it's because they, they don't either, one, read their emails that come from DESE, or they don't go on that DESE website, and there's a specific section that relates to grants. And it's to your advantage to go out and keep up to date on those, because that's where you can really find some money sometimes to do some innovative programs in your school district against title money. As a 21st Century Community Learning Center's grant, it's an example of a grant application, but it's also an example of a Title IV grant application in this case, which also applies for this particular grant. And it gives you some ideas about how if you're in a school district, you've analyzed what you need, how do we get the money. Sometimes a grant application is the way to do it. And uh, so that's, that's one tip that maybe will be beneficial to you later when you become a school administrator.